Thanks for joining me today. We're going to run through how to calculate child support in Wisconsin. Uh, a couple of things to go through first before we run some actual calculations. Uh, we're going to use this uh, Microsoft Excel program. This is the child support calculator tool. I cannot take credit for it. Uh, it was created by now retired Judge Mac Davis, uh, a great Waukesha County uh, judge, retired a couple of years ago. Uh, and he put this out uh, to help practitioners uh, and the public calculate child support. It's very easy to use. Uh, we're going to make it available on our website shortly, uh, and I'm going to make it available uh, via email if you email me at the email address listed below. I'll be happy to send you this calculation tool. Uh, child support in Wisconsin is governed by both the Wisconsin statutes and an administrative code called DCF 150. And that code sets forth how the courts are supposed to apply child support in different circumstances. Um, there are two main types of child support formulas for you to be aware of. One child support formula is applied where one of the parents has what is called primary placement. And there's a different child support formula that is applied when parents have what is called shared placement. This video is not to go through primary placement and shared placement. We're going to do other videos on that and I may be able to link in the description below uh, another video on that. But for now, um, just understand there are two different types of child support formulas. And we're going to go through the primary placement formula first because it's more simple. Um, primary placement is defined as one parent having 75% or more of the overnights with the party's children. All right? So if you or your spouse has more than 75% of the overnights, then you or your spouse has primary placement and this formula would apply. So the formula is a function of the gross income of the parent who has less time. So if, I'll give you an example, mom has primary placement of one child and father is making $50,000 a year, a percentage of father's gross income will be applied and that will determine child support. In this instance, it would be 17%. I'm gonna show you here on the screen a nice listing of the different calculations for the number of children that you have based on your income. So if a parent has primary placement and one child, as an example, the non-primary parent will pay 17% of his or her income. And those percentages are changed depending on the income of that parent. So a parent with a high income uh, between $7,000 a month and $12,500 a month, that's $84,000 a year and $150,000 a year, will only pay 14% of his or her income in that range. So the payer will pay 17% of income up to $7,000 a month. And then 14% of any income between $7,000 a month and $12,500 a month. That then is increased, uh, I'm sorry, decreased for any income earned over $12,500 per month or $150,000 a year down to 10% and so on. Likewise, I'm not going to go over it, but there is a low income payer formula, which uh, as you can imagine, applies a lower percentage than the standard 17% for income below a certain amount, and that's between 575 and 950 a month, okay? Now, as the number of children increases, the percentage that is paid by the payor also increases. So the base percentage for one child is 17%, for two children, 25%, three children, 29%, and so on. And then there are different high and low income payer formulas for those numbers of children, okay? Child support is paid for any child who is a minor until that child is 18 or 19 if the child is still pursuing a high school diploma. So it is possible that you end up paying child support or receiving child support on a child that is 18 years old if he or she is still a senior in high school or pursuing a high school diploma. That's very important to be aware of. Uh, and we'll go over that in more detail in another video. But we're gonna use this tool to run some scenarios just so that you can understand and get an idea of how child support is calculated. I'll go back to my original scenario. We have mom with primary placement and dad having uh, $50,000 a year in income. So we would input one child here, okay, and the number of children. And then child support is based on overnights, all right? We can talk about equivalent care. There's a new statute that was passed which allows the court to calculate things other than overnights. That's the subject of another video and is pretty sparingly used at this point. Um, so we're just gonna go on overnights, but let's just assume that dad doesn't have any placement of the child. Mom has placement 365 days a year, okay? If that's the case, 
and father makes uh, $50,000 a year. We'll take 50,000, and I'm doing this for demonstrative purposes, um, but he would make $4,166.66 a month, so we're just gonna round up to 4167. So we input that here, 67. And this tells me that father would owe $708 in child support per month, okay? Now that number is exactly 17% of 4167. What is interesting about the primary payer formula is that it actually doesn't matter how much money mom earns. And this is the subject of a lot of debate and disagreement. Uh, a lot of people think this is unfair, but I'll plug in here, for example, uh, we'll give mom $100,000 in income per month, okay? doesn't change child support. And the reason for that is mom has primary placement. Mom has more than 75% of the overnights in a given year. Okay, that would be the case even if father had 65 overnights and mother had 300 overnights, it still doesn't change, okay? Uh, if we add children, so we're gonna add two children now, uh, $1,042 a month, so this is exactly 25% of father's gross income. I can show you here that on the calculator. Okay, 25% of father's gross income, and so on, okay? All right, so now we're gonna talk about um, a different scenario where maybe father has, let's say, 65 overnights, just to make the numbers easy, and mother has 300 overnights. This is still a primary placement situation to mother, even though father has a bunch of overnights in the year, because mother has more than 75% of the overnights in a given year. And here you'll see again, uh, if I give father his 4167 a month, this is we're back to one child now. Uh, even if I give mother $10,000 a month in income, child support still will not change because of that primary placement formula. All right? Everything changes though once we get out of the primary placement situation and get into a shared placement situation. And that was the other type of child support formula that I was discussing earlier, uh, where neither parent had more than 75% of the overnights in a given year. Um, and that could be an equal shared placement where both parents have equal time or 50% of the time. And it could be some other type of arrangement where uh, maybe 60-40 or 70-30, as long as one parent doesn't have 75% or more overnights in the given year with the child or children, this other formula will apply. And this other formula takes into consideration both the amount of time that each parent spends with the child and both parties' incomes, as opposed to the primary placement situation, which only cares about the income of the parent with less than 25% of time. Um, and so we can run uh, some scenarios here. Let's give them equal shared placement. So that's 182 overnights to father and 182 and a half overnights to mother, so half of 365 days. Now mother owes father $676 a month, same incomes. And the reason for that is the equal shared placement formula looks at both incomes of both parties, okay? And so we can play with these numbers. The less time I give dad, the more time I give mom, the lower mom's child support obligation will go and vice versa. Another thing to point out is that oftentimes court will assign responsibility for health insurance premiums by increasing or decreasing child support. So let's say in this scenario, 50-50 uh, placement between the parents, father makes 50,000 a year or monthly 4167, mother makes $120,000 a year or monthly 10,000. She's paying $676 per month, but let's say the health insurance premiums for the children are $200 a month. The court is likely to reduce mother's child support obligation by one half the amount of the health insurance premiums that she is paying. So if she's paying 200 bucks a month, instead of paying father 676 in child support, she's probably gonna pay him 576 in child support. Again, the judge has a lot of discretion here. They don't have to apply it that way, um, but most of the time that is how it gets applied. Which brings me to my next point. Um, judges have discretion, all right? These are formulas, this is the starting point, this is the default, but a court has the authority to modify or to stray or deviate from the child support calculations in special circumstances. And there can be all kinds of special circumstances. Maybe a child has extraordinary special needs and the child support formula doesn't really account for those. Maybe a parent who doesn't have any income is sitting on a huge sum of assets that they inherited, even though those assets aren't generating income, that could be a factor that the 
court is going to use to determine child support. And there are a variety of other factors, which is why if you're in a, a situation that isn't perfectly clear, it is a good idea to uh, contact an attorney for a consultation at a minimum and maybe even get representation to make sure you're either paying what you should be paying or receiving what you should be receiving. Uh, that ends this video. Uh, we'll talk more about child support in some other videos, including uh, non-overnight or equivalent care, um, imputations of income where a party is going to be imputed income over and above what he or she is actually earning, and other topics in a later video. I hope this was informative. Please visit our website, www.carplawfirm.com, or feel free to give us a call at 414-453-0800.